Hello, folks. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes for some more people to join. Good morning. I'm going to be kind of listening for a bit while I get some breakfast. Sounds good. Ava stole my idea because I was going to be listen only as I make lunch. <laughs> While we're waiting, um, let me post the the uh, notes again. Feel free to sort of add your sort of uh, attendance to the notes um, for today. Going to give it another minute or two, and uh, we can get started. All right, uh, we can get started here. Um, so uh, just uh, as a reminder with along with every other meeting, um, this this meeting uh, is a part of the CNCF and therefore falls under the um, CNCF's code of conduct. So uh, by you know, attending this meeting, uh, you're abiding, you know, uh, you agree to abide by the CNCF's code of conduct. And also, um, please uh, note that this meeting is recorded and um, will be uploaded to YouTube shortly after um, this meeting ends, usually within you know a day or two. All right, cool. Um, so I see uh, some new names, I think, on the group. So d is there anybody who's new who wants to maybe introduce themselves? Well, I think I've joined in the past couple of times, but I'm, I'm David Spejo, a community manager supporting open source projects at VMO. Okay. And uh, thank you. All right. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, not a whole lot on the agenda for today, um, just a couple of updates. So um, one thing is, uh, so Andres is working on uh, building out the draft for the um, reference architecture, as in like just sort of cleaning up the, the formatting of the paper. Uh, the sounds like there's um, some of the folks on the CNCF side who are normally responsible for that are, are kind of pretty um, slammed. Uh, right now, so uh, we're uh, so Andres is sort of taking that on, um, and should hopefully be finishing that up. We hope to have it out, maybe even tomorrow, uh, if not Monday. Um, I know it keeps getting pushed back. We're still trying to kind of get it out as soon as possible so that we can get it in front of the community for um, community feedback. So that's the the big thing. 
Um, the other thing, uh, which, you know, um, uh, trying to, uh, one second. Um, so another thing uh, for next week, I believe um, Hector will be uh, giving a demo uh, to the group next week. Is that is that right, Hector? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Do you do you want to sort of just give uh, like a two sentence um, uh, overview of what you what you want to show off next next meeting? Uh, yeah. So what I want to show is a demo uh, that will basically combine or focus on the mission controller based on the S-Bone content, right? Rather than whether the S-Bone is signed or whether the, uh, the, the authority or entity that's signing is, is valid, I, I will focus on content validation. That is more challenging, this aspect, yeah. Cool. All right, uh, just because I noticed a few other folks have joined, you know, feel free to add your attendance to the sort of the meeting notes there. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so um, the only other main thing on the agenda, and this is just something I'm going to post in the Slack chat and see if I can send out some emails regarding is um, I know with the new year, a lot of folks have um, changed roles, whether it's at different companies at, uh, you know, or even within the same company. So a lot of folks who, who um, or I don't want to say a lot, but they, there are a few folks who have expressed that this time for this meeting might not work um, as much more. So I'm going to open up a poll um, to, uh, to just see is this, if this time still works for folks. We can keep this time. If uh, some folks had suggested pushing it back an hour, if that works for people, we can we can check that. Um, or any other time, um, we, we can start to sort of look at that. All right, cool. Um, Steve, you have your, your hand up there. Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to follow up from uh, last week. We talked about the signing, or sorry, the SBOM um, roles and responsibilities kind of thing. So. I do appreciate the feedback that I got from folks and um, I post that up. It's in the Word doc also, or sorry, the Google doc. So I think it's mostly a you know, point of conversation. So um, the whole factual versus in third is an interesting split between SBOMs and uh, scan results. So I just wanted to get that out there for conversation. And like I said, I appreciate all the feedback from folks. Cool, yeah. Um, you know, uh, Steve put that in the doc, but just as, oh, never mind. You just, you also just posted the link there. I was just gonna, um, all right, cool. Um, all right, cool. Yeah. Uh, so beyond that for, for this week, there's really not a whole lot, um, as far as stuff that's on the agenda. So that's where you know, we can open this up for, um, conversation. Uh, if folks have sort of, oh, actually before, before um, any of that, does anybody have any sort of updates from any open source projects that they feel is relevant to this, um, to this group? Yeah, I have a small one uh, of my own. Um, I shared previously into this group, my survey of the open source supply chain landscape um, Google Docs and asked for input. Folks here graciously gave me some input on that. Uh, and I, so I want to let folks know that I moved that from Google Docs over to GitHub. And I would love, you know, PRs and, you know, ongoing, if there are updates in projects or new projects, please open a PR. So this can become a, a space where everybody can go look and see a huge list of all the work that's happening. Um, and if anyone has ideas on how to synthesize that, the next thing I'm going to do, um, and I'd love to propose some work in this group over time uh, to talk about synthesizing that and, and forming a taxonomy of the different types of work, similar to what Steve was just referencing, like what are the different functions that projects fulfill in a secure software supply chain or software factory? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we can definitely put that, um, you know, uh, Put that out to the broader group. Um, I know you, you've been seeing a couple of things uh, uh, about that and um, looking for feedback. That's definitely something I know um, I'm interested in because the, there is a lot of 
uh, you know, often confusing over what vocabulary we're using and how we're using it. Um, and we want to make sure that folks are, are fairly sort of, con you know, don't necessarily need to be um, uh, completely uh, in lockstep with each other on how um, we approach some of these problems, but even just sort of the general um, approach and, and making sure that we're all sort of speaking the same language is very important. Cool. Uh, any other um, updates? I saw some stuff recently, uh, Priya, I, I, I believe you said that, uh, I think there's supposed to be a, a new chains release soon. Is that correct? Yeah, there's just like one bug that I've been working on fixing, but I think in the next couple of days, you should have another release out. Cool, and um, I should have uh, a fix for the, the, um, the salsa stuff, uh, probably after this, little after this meeting. Awesome. Um, another sort of short, quick update from, um, some of the work that we've been, uh, doing on my end. Um, so we have that, the secure software factory, which is more or less based on, um, the CNCF's, uh, supply chain best practices, white paper, some of the stuff that we put in this reference architecture, um, you know, a, a set of tools aligned, uh, configured and aligned, uh, to the, to the, the work that we've been doing in this group. Um, hoping to, pub, you know, once we get approval internally to publicize this a little bit uh, broader, but um, I have been given, uh, <laughs> I've, I've been told it's, it's okay for me to share with this group and, and, you know, if it shares by word of mouth, that's fine. Um, but, you know, we, we're doing a lot of work on this end to sort of uh, build some, you know, uh, build sort of a, a holistic um, set of tools that could be used as, as a jumping off point um, for somebody's, uh, you know, supply chain security journey. Um, if they want to sort of uh, approach um, building things securely uh, while, you know, and something like a GitHub actions doesn't necessarily fit the bill. They need something a little bit uh, more flexible. But that's really it um, from my end. Uh, any other updates, anything else? Otherwise we can kind of just maybe, um, you know, transition to sort of more of a, a round table. We can maybe talk about some of the topics that um, Steve, or, Steve or Ava brought up. All right. Yeah, just, um, I mean, I mean, sorry. Um, I'll go ahead. <laughs> pause for the uh, find the, the mute button. Um, I think, it's, you know, that's one of the things I was hoping to get into in like, the next round of discussions for this, you know, kind of as we think about papers and guidance and so forth. Um, the idea that an SBOM could be used to be much more informative to security scanners uh, is just huge. So it just, but having some standards around that so the security scanners aren't chasing everybody's varied implement, varied opinion and implementation of scan results would be awesome. Whether, you know, the various S, S bomb formats can, you know, uh, align on a single format or not, I don't know, but at least if there's a, a framing that this is what an S bomb is versus isn't um, and the types of information that could go into it, I just think would really help secure the supply chain a whole lot better with scanners that are always the, the paper kind of makes this position that there's facts that are known, there's information we learn over time. And I think those two pieces are pretty important elements that we could think about. So I'd love to get more input and hoping to see a standard of some sort so that the scanners can just pick up, uh, pick up on it and run. Yeah, um, on that note, I know that there's a few different things that have been going on, whether it's the, uh, was it, um, trying to remember all that because there's the vulnerability exploitability exchange there's a bunch of these things that are going around and but the, the big thing i think that folks have been bringing up is there's going to be always a combination of things right you're going to have um you know your s bombs are going to be able to more easily tell you stuff just like hey i have unique identifiers for my um or hopefully unique identifiers for 
just the, the software that's included and maybe some additional metadata regarding how that software is included so that you have a bit of a better understanding of like, you know, is this something that's, um, uh, it, you know, is this something, you know, how, how is it included? So it helps inform folks on, on, you know, oh, this is included in a way that could be exploited, whatever. Um, and, and I think some of that helps out with just sort of more easily saying, yep, there might be a piece of vulnerable software now because a new CVE has come in a new, however you want to kind of explain that. Um, and then separately, there's also increasing, you know, as time goes on, obviously there's, there's, uh, uh, the scanning tools that are out there are using different, you know, I should say the deep scanning tools that are out there that are using different heuristics and different algorithms to kind of figure out if particular code paths are vulnerable to some sort of attack. Um, yeah. uh, point of clarification that today, at least the CISA recommendations for an SBOM, the, you know, the EO's minimum uh, elements of an SBOM are not a unique identifier. That that is um, correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my my proposal with GitBomb is actually to create a standardized way to uniquely identify the components of any piece of software in a way that is hierarchical and um, also compact and machine readable. And to me, that the compactness and the completeness are both key elements of GitBomb that things like SPDX do not yet incorporate. Uh, Brendan? Yeah, I was going to throw in there that um, we're discussing whether to call this an SBOM for a, for a security scan result, and I would lean toward probably calling it more something like an attestation, um, just because yeah. I, typically when I think of an SBOM, I think of something that's static, like your hit bomb, that's not going to change over time, that's it will be passed from machine to machine, and the scan results are going to be dynamic, they're going to change over time, and so it's going to be something much shorter lived, and there's just going to be a security server saying, hey, I attest that this happened within the past week, and here's the result. Yeah. There, there's an important distinction there, and I'm going to totally rip off of um, Steve's blog post, the, the difference between the ingredients and a chemical analysis of the output of cooking something, right? After I've made a breakfast quesadilla, um, the chemical composition of that Maillard, the, the butter burning with the carbohydrates, is totally different than the ingredients that I put into it. And the, the point of an SBOM is to be the ingredient list. The point of a scan is to find out what happened afterwards. Is there mold in it now? I didn't put mold in the food or I didn't put charcoal in the food. These are different results and, and they're different um, value. I, I, it was, that's exactly the kind of the point is I think that there's some really interesting conversations around what can be done with information um, and where it's done and when. And, and obviously this, the purpose of these conversations are to queue up these because uh, attestations are interesting, you know, it, the raw ingredients that we factually know not referred after the fact. Um, and then the time-based analysis based on new information that evolves. Um, classifying those in a way I think will help um, facilitate the conversations that I think everybody's trying to uh, get out of securing this content. I don't know if that's a working group, how you want to do it or anything else that you're thinking about. So uh, one thing real quick and then uh, Hector. So yeah, actually there is um, some reasonable, uh, a lot of folks, uh, right before the holidays and even right after the holidays have expressed, not just within this group, but in the open SSF among just sort of some chats uh, offline, uh, a, a good deal of people have expressed interest in, hey, now that we're generating attestations, now that we're generating SBOMs, that we're generating all this stuff, great, what do we do with all of it? How do we correlate all that data or connect all that data in, in you know, such that we can get these sort of deeper insights? And so there is, seems to be a lot of um, interest there. Uh, my quick two cents is I, I would really prefer that it didn't become necessarily a whole new uh, working group because there's there's more than enough working groups to go around. Um, but But maybe even just a couple of just handful of introductory meetings and then saying, hey, maybe it makes sense for this working group to really spearhead it or whatever, um, I think think would be there. And but but yeah, so I'll definitely keep um, folks in this group, uh, you know, if anything, 
comes up from that, I'll, I'll definitely get keep folks informed. Uh, Michael, do you think it makes sense to center that sort of taxonomy discussion um, in the Open SSF as a working group there, maybe in one of the existing ones, maybe a new one, um, and let the CNCF working group, this one, or any you know ones within this, uh, utilize the output of a C uh, of an Open SSF based discussion on the taxonomy. Um, I largely agree with that. I would want to make sure that we get uh, input from the rest of the group, but but I, my personal two cents is 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 I I agree with that, and we can probably have a kind of a conversation, continue the conversation in the Slack just to kind of get some additional thoughts. Um, Hector, you have had your hand up for a while. Yeah, so I think this conversation is is, is uh, aligned a lot with with uh, uh, what, uh, for instance, in my opinion, Cyclone DX, the latest version that has been released, I think, one day ago, the 1.4 um, adds has features and parts of the SBOM uh, generation, which is even, uh, I mean, before they would have vulnerabilities, but now they even include the, the bags and other additional information inside this bomb. I agree with, with everyone here that probably, yeah, having it as part of this bomb file um, looks like a lot of information and unnecessary as well. Probably in other stations could be a solution, but I also think, and at being where we use Cyclone DX, um, because you can also state the vulnerabilities that you encounter when, when you release a version. So you could, um, see that this ROM contain all these dependencies and at the same time you can see that at that date I, I ran the scan report and there were no critical CVEs and, and those are the CVEs that my scan tool detected. So it, it, it's kind of an attestation included but you could also justify to customers if in three days after doing the release um, they, they complain that there are critical CVEs that at that moment they weren't and you could justify with them why they weren't there. But but yeah, it's, it's a great discussion. Cool, yeah. Um, yeah let me, uh, I know it's it's mostly just been, um, I know a lot of folks throughout the community are, are, are very, very interested about this particular thing. I know it's one of the things that after a lot of the great work that this group and, and, and other groups have sort of done in, um, you know, the tooling space in sort of generating, um, uh, S bombs or generating attestations and, and signing of things. And, you know, a lot of folks have been uh, saying, Hey, uh, we, we have all this data now. What do we do with it? How do we, um, you know, how does this prevent the next log for J or not necessarily prevent, but how does this help us when the next log for J sort of situation happens? And it's like, Oh, well, we need to be able to kind of query that data, you know, link that data such that you can have something like a graph. Um, I know I've been poking around with some ideas around that as well. Uh, and, and so I think it's definitely worth some pretty, uh, uh, some more discussions. I'm going to shamelessly plug Gitbomb and say that I, I believe Gitbomb, if implemented, would enable a rapid scan to detect where Log4j was embedded in systems. Whether those systems were, you know, a software stack running a JVM in your for, for web serving or a firmware stack like JVM embedded in your um, hardware devices, which is a thing. Um, and I, I, I would love to see other solutions that do this, but to date, I haven't. Yeah, so the only one I'm aware of that that does this, and to be clear, we recognize that it's it's hard to adopt is um, Nix and Nix OS, right? Because they're doing a similar sort of thing where they're building out a Merkle tree of all the dependencies. Um, they can go and say, you know, uh, hey, where does, you know, if log4j exists in my Merkle tree, it will just, you know, be, it, it would be a quick check. Um, with that said, you know, there's obviously uh, you would need to be completely 100% inside uh, the Nix uh, slash Nix OS sort of universe there. And, and if you're not, you're, yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's the same um, end result, uh, a Merkle tree of hashes of the software identities. Um, I, will, I will dig into, I didn't know Nix OS had already done that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They they do a few things, and actually, I think that there's there's uh, a lot of 
areas probably for collaboration there, um, probably between Git Bomb and, and some of the stuff. I, I had actually spoken to Frederick a little bit offline about uh, some of that. Um, it, it's definitely, I think, worthwhile to kind of look into because I think, you know, uh, the way that they are sort of managing that makes it sort of also a little difficult to then um, distribute some of that information if you're not within the Nix world. Whereas I think Git Bomb maybe is a, is a little bit better suited for that. I'm, I'm, you know, haven't taken too close of a look uh, lately, but um, yeah. Right, let's see. Um, okay. Um, what else? Um, any other uh, topics, questions, comments, uh, thoughts? Um, okay, actually, does it, anybody know anybody from the, the Cyclone DX side who might be able to maybe give a, a demo of some of the new stuff in 1.4? You know, one of my, my big uh, open questions has been that, uh, hey, I see the new 1.4 stuff. I see sort of like, you know, I've, I've read through the, um, the press releases, but I, I, I'm a little confused as the, the what's the diff um, between uh, 1.3, 1.4? What's like the sort of big sort of differences there? And, and what are the, like, you know, what's the, what are some of the takeaways? Um, I don't know if anybody knows folks, uh, whether it's um, uh, uh, Steve Springett or any of those uh, other folks who, who might be able to sort of uh, give a demo to this group. I don't know anyone, but I think it would be an interesting idea. I agree with you. Yeah, that would be great. All right. Uh, oh yeah, Patrick Dwyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I can uh, go and reach out and see if in the next couple of weeks we can get somebody to kind of talk through um, talk through some of that. Uh, also, uh, for a little more cross pollination, um, I know that in the Open SSF. Uh, they have recently changed the digital identity working group into the supply chain integrity um, working group. They are, uh, so that's, you know, once again, I think as we're kind of getting into the new year and, and more of these groups are spinning up, um, the CNCF, I think, uh, obviously open to sort of additional feedback, but I think more or less we've we've centered on focusing on cloud native approaches to supply chain integrity um, uh, or supply chain security, uh, securing the supply chain for cloud native tools and, and whatever, and things that are associated with just sort of generally with, with the intersection of cloud native and supply chain, um, as opposed to sort of just generic open source um, stuff. Whereas the open SSF is kind of a little bit more focused on the, the higher level and the more generic just sort of hey, how do we do supply chain security for open source and for things that consume open source? Um, uh, so for folks who, who aren't aware of that, I, I definitely recommend, you know, if you're interested, uh, you know. Uh, did this group have a presentation for the SBDX folks? Uh, so I sorry, don't- Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your thought. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I don't think so, and it probably makes sense to to have um, a demo from them as well. Uh, yeah, it, it makes sense to have a demo from them as well. So if anybody knows SPDX folks, definitely down to to have um, uh, to have that. Uh, yeah. So to to go back to what I was saying before, um, so recommend anybody who's interested, definitely check out um, the Open SSF. Uh, you know, there, there's work on the supply chain integrity stuff that I think is really interesting. Then um, uh, there was one other thing I wanted to bring up on that point. Oh yeah, so 
in that meeting next week, uh, going to be uh, a few of us on my side are going to be demoing that secure software factory. We're going to be showing off how we use um, uh, how we use a couple, bunch of different sorts of features uh, to sort of um, uh, help secure the supply chain, help give folks an easy interface for certain types of use cases such that they can kind of, within the scope of the secure software factory, you can be relatively certain, you know, assuming that you trust the secure software factory itself, that, you know, we're building code in the right ways, that we're on, you know, that we're, we're doing all the right sorts of things to, you know, following the documents that we've written and, and so on. Um, cool, I will definitely reach out. Uh, Uh, right. Uh, so let me go and just put that in my notepad. Right. Cool. Um, yeah. So just wanted to throw that out there. Um, does anybody have anything else? Otherwise we can kind of end a, uh, half hour early. And just as a reminder, I'm going to, uh, everybody has access to the Slack, right? Is, does anybody not have to the Slack or isn't, hasn't been invited to the Slack. All right, I'll, I'll take that as everybody in there. So in that case, I, I will, I'll create a poll in the, um, in the, in the Slack channel for potentially rescheduling the meeting. Cause as a few people had mentioned, uh, a slightly different time might make a bit more sense for folks. Um, and it, some people can't make it because change in roles or whatever. Uh, so I just want to make sure that we can kind of get as many people involved as, as is possible. And then beyond that, um, just as a reminder, the paper by Hooker by Crook uh, will, will, will be, um, uh, should be going out in the next couple of days um, uh, to, for, for community um, feedback. All right. Any do you last two thoughts? Oh, oh, sure. Two ideas or parting thoughts. Um, I, first, a question. Uh, the paper you mentioned going out soon, I also saw a note that uh, there's a plan for either, is it a new paper or a revision of that, of that paper in time for KubeCon North America in the fall? Yep. Yep. Uh, so the idea would be that uh, it will, we are really pushing for this to probably be a living architecture document. Okay. Great. Um, so there's there's a there's a couple of things. There's there is the general um, CNCF uh, cloud native security white paper, which is getting a big V2 refresh. But gotcha. then um, the supply chain stuff that we're doing, we sort of are recognizing that uh, as you know, we put something in there, and then the next day it's no longer true yeah. <laughs> because somebody yeah. has changed it. Right? You know, <laughs> we might say certain things like, oh. Uh, uh, this, you know, we don't have a great way for associating supply, you know, uh, vulnerability information with the S bomb. <laughs> and oh, then somebody another... makes it and proposes it. Yeah, yep. totally. Yep, it's got to be a living document. I agree. Yeah, yeah. And so on that note, we're 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 trying to do that. And then the other thing, um, just just as an FYI, is one of the big reasons why we're trying to release a draft of of the document as a um. Uh, as a PDF and as a like a mostly finalized looking document. Mm -hmm. uh, the main reason for that is in the past, we went into some issues where like 90% of the comments are like, you have a typo here, as opposed to me more meaningful, like, <laughs> hey, th this general, this general uh, thing I totally disagree with. And I think we should be doing this. Like we want more of the comments around, you know, hey, it, it probably makes more sense for us to focus on this rather than that, or yeah. this so, general thread doesn't make sense as opposed to sort of more the, the bike shedding kind of like, Hey, I think you, you know, uh, you have a typo here, that kind of stuff. Would it be, um, and maybe you've already done this and I, I, I kind of missed meetings for a few months from other distractions. Um, I'd love to get reinvolved in both of those. Uh, the, the cloud native security overall and the supply chain specifically, are they both still working groups with their own meetings? I can jump into the Slack channels or has the organization changed? 
Sure. So um, as far as the normal CNCF security goes, uh, there is tag security. So there is that mm -hmm. uh, happens um, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, that's when that meeting okay. ha happens. Uh, there's a couple of other working groups that are sort of um, that are, have come out of that. There's a lot of different working groups can that are I, that are part. Can I find them all either on the calendar or in the Slack? Like a yes. Pinch. Great. And I think yep. um, one that you might be interested in is that, that they're doing a version two of the cloud native. Um, security white paper overall, which I think that working group is meeting an hour before the general um, cloud native okay. security meeting, um, okay. which sounds like you might be interested in. So yeah. Yes, I would be. Thank you. I think there's a Slack channel for that as well. Perfect. I'm probably not in all the Slack channels right now, and that's that's what's happening. Um, I'm only in two of them. It looks like. Um, cool. So I will dig into that. Thank you for helping me figure out where I, where I've been missing. And then have folks been working on. Uh, or in some of the, the supply chain conversations here, how Notary v2 fits into that picture? Has that been part of a discussion so far? So I know um, we had some earlier sorts of conversations on some of that. Um, at the time, I believe there was still a lot of stuff that was in flux. Um, we're definitely down to have more like, you know, uh, I know um, Steve had given a little bit of a demo a couple of months ago on yeah. some of that I, stuff. I know Justin was here talking about that with me last time I was involved. I saw Justin and that was, again, yep. like three, four months ago now. Yep. Yep. So we're definitely, um, you know, uh, it, 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 we do cite certain things on there, um, but I believe when we were citing some of that, it was before some of the tooling was was fully baked Great. with some of that. But now I know that now that it's, um, I don't know if it's, it's still alpha. A bit. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're cool. Then I'd love to, to help re-engage and make sure that's getting updated. Yep. Yes. Yeah, sounds great. Awesome. Um, yep. And then, yeah. So uh, I'm just going to list out some of the working groups real quickly that I think some folks might uh, be interested in. So um, there's tag security itself, right? And I, I will start to, I'll put this in the agenda um, after I'm done listing these things off. Uh, so there is tag security itself, um, which there's the white paper uh, that Marina had mentioned that there's, they're doing a V2 of that. There is also um, one which is for folks who are maybe uh, you know, work with the federal government a lot or work in, in regulated industries a lot, there is TAG uh, security, uh, there's ta there is the controls working group that's under TAG security, which is trying to look at um, mapping, uh, whether it is tools to secure, uh, to um, controls like NIST 800, 190, 853, whatever, or also just other sorts of um, international uh, standards and and, 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 uh, and international controls as well, but also looking at ways to, you know, hey, uh, here's a best practices document that we think that if you apply those best practices also hits these controls, it, pretty much a, a whole thing there to try and get all of that sort of synced up. Um, there's also uh, a governance working group, which is more around um, what sorts of things can we do to, uh, um, uh, I believe it's, it's for, uh, what sorts of things that cloud native, um, projects can do for their own governance in order to sort of, um, help out with security. So stuff like, you know, Hey, if, if one person has full admin access to everything, that's probably a, a, a security problem. Um, those sorts of things, uh, there's, um, uh, there's this working group, and um, I think those are the primary ones that I think are relevant probably to the folks who are on this call. And all that stuff should be accessible from um, both the tag security GitHub uh, and a few other things. Cool. Uh, Thoughts, uh, 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 any final thoughts, any other questions, topics? Does anybody have anything that they want to demo in the next coming weeks that they want to put on the agenda? All right. Uh, if not, uh, just a reminder, um, Hector will be uh, demoing um, next week, uh, showing some of the stuff regarding how to, to do sort of introspection on an SBOM at emission control time so that they can um, so that we can uh, look at an SBOM and and 
control uh, Kubernetes and mission based on, on the content of the SBOM. And uh, I will keep folks updated as soon as that um, the draft of the, the reference architecture goes out. All right, have a good rest of uh, your week, everybody, and see you uh, next week. Excellent, thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.